Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to section 5.2 on intermolecular forces in solids, liquids, and gases. Now, we just finished talking about how different molecules can have specific geometries. And those geometries are based on the repulsive forces within the molecule. So, and they make that molecule have a specific geometry. Now, we're going to shift our conversation to the forces that make molecules interact with each other. Those are called inter molecular forces, forces between molecules. Now, this little recap on solids, liquids, and gases. Solids are packed tightly together, definite shape, definite volume. Liquids are a little bit looser, a little more flowy, I mean, definite volume, but an indefinite shape. Gases have both an indefinite shape and indefinite volume. The Characteristics of solids, liquids, and gases are determined by intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces are the attractive forces acting between molecules. And as you know, these little circles here are representing molecules interacting together. So here's some key factors that affect intermolecular forces, oftentimes abbreviated as IMFs. So intermolecular forces are affected by one concept called electronegativity. I mentioned this way back when we talked about the different periodic trends like ionization energy and um, <clears throat> atomic radius. This is one of the third periodic trends that we didn't really talk about very much. But electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract electrons in a chemical bond. Here's an example. We know that an alcohol has a functional group called you know, OH the OH functional group. Let's just say this is the OH functional group. So over here we have some hydrocarbon on the side, but here's the part that we're focused on. We have oxygen attached to a hydrogen. Now oxygen is a very electronegative atom, meaning it has a tendency to attract electrons to itself in a covalent bond. So the electrons that make up this bond here, this oxygen is going to pull them towards itself creating or meaning it's electronegative. It's going to pull the electrons towards itself. There are three atoms that are extremely electronegative. Oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine. Fluorine is the most electronegative atom. Atoms around fluorine are very electronegative as well. But these are the big three. Now electronegativity lends itself to another factor that is key in intermolecular forces. That factor is polarity. We've talked about polarity before, but a polar bond is when the difference in electronegativity of neighboring atoms causes electrons to be attracted more to one of the atoms of the bond, making one atom slightly negative and one atom slightly positive. Here's an example. Take our same functional group of an alcohol, the OH group. This oxygen is very electronegative. This hydrogen is not very electronegative. Thus, the oxygen kind of acts like a bully and just pulls the electrons that it's sharing with the hydrogen, or the electron that it's sharing with the hydrogen, towards itself. So the electrons go towards the oxygen. As we know, electrons are negatively charged. If I have negative things being pulled closer towards me, I become partially negatively charged. So this oxygen becomes partially negatively charged. We draw this delta symbol here. Delta negative meaning partially negative for the oxygen. And this hydrogen becomes partially positive because it's in the absence of those electrons. Partial absence. They're not completely gone. They're just far away from the hydrogen. This is called a polar bond meaning that there are two opposite poles here, a partial negative pole and a partial positive pole. These partial poles or partial charges are permanent. As long as this oxygen is connected to that hydrogen, this is going to form a polar bond and it will be there forever. Now this concept of electronegativity and polarity can help us determine the molecular force, well, I guess, give us a better insight to the intermolecular forces acting on molecules. 
So there are three main types of intermolecular forces. The first one is one that we know very well or we've heard of before, hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding refers to the intermolecular attraction due to a polarized hydrogen atom to a nearby highly electronegative atom, which in all cases will be oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine. So in order for hydrogen bonding to occur, your electronegative atom will have to be oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. These atoms will polarize a hydrogen atom, which would create hydrogen bonding between molecules. If you didn't get that, here's an example. So let's take water, for example. Water has an oxygen attached to two hydrogens. We just said oxygen is a very electronegative atom, meaning it has a tendency to pull electrons towards itself. When it does so, it's going to pull electrons in these bonds up towards itself, that way and this way, making itself partially negative in the hydrogen that it's pulling electrons from, not completely away, but away from it, partially positive. So that's what this means is the attraction due to a polarized hydrogen atom. These hydrogen atoms here have been polarized. They are across a polar bond here. The same happens in this atom next to it. You know, there's never just, sorry, this molecule next to it. There's never just one molecule present. So electrons are being drawn towards this oxygen as well because it's way more electronegative than this hydrogen. Hydrogen becomes partially positive, partially positive. And now we have a polar molecule and a polar molecule here. Hydrogen bonding is the interaction between these two molecules, or the attraction between these two molecules. In hydrogen bonding, this partially negative oxygen will be attracted to this partially positive hydrogen. And the same thing here. Partial positive hydrogen attracted to that partial negative oxygen. And this keeps happening over and over and over with all the molecules, water molecules around, and you form this loose network of connections. This, a little loopy line here, these things here are your hydrogen bonds. They're called hydrogen bonds. They give them the name bonds because they're very strong. They are not like covalent or ionic bonds in that they, they're part of sharing or um, donating or swapping electrons, sorry, not donating or swapping, but transferring electrons. Electron transfer or sharing is not involved with hydrogen bonds, but they're given the term bonds because they are very strong. Not as strong as covalent or ionic, but right underneath. Something important about hydrogen bonds, the strong hydrogen bonds give water and other molecules their high boiling points and complex crystallized structures. Talk more about that tomorrow. Your second type of intermolecular force is a dipole-dipole interaction. A dipole, as the name states, di meaning two, P-O-L-E, pole, is just two poles. When you have two opposing sides that are attracted to each other. So it refers to the intermolecular attraction of oppositely charged regions of a polar molecule. We just learned what polar meant. Now let's talk about a polar molecule in our example here. Chlorine, if you look at the periodic table, is close to fluorine. And I said earlier, fluorine is a very electronegative atom. So atoms around fluorine will also be electronegative <clears throat> on the, if you look at the periodic table. So chlorine is right under fluorine, so it's electronegative, but it's not quite as electronegative as oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine. So, but chlorine will pull electrons in this bond towards itself, creating this dipole, which says that chlorine will become partially negative, hydrogen becomes partially positive. Same thing happens with this neighboring molecule here. Chlorine pulls electrons in this bond because it's more electronegative, becomes partially negative, this becomes partially positive, and because of this dipole-dipole, over here and over here, we have a dipole here, we have a dipole here, there's an interaction between the two. 
This partial negative charge is attracted to the partial positive charge of the neighboring atom. Now you might say this looks exactly like this up here. Why isn't this called hydrogen bonding? I have a polarized hydrogen attached to or attracted to a neighboring electronegative atom. It's only hydrogen bonding when we have oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine atoms acting as the electronegative atom. Otherwise, we just refer to them as a general dipole-dipole interaction. Hope you got that. The last and most common intermolecular force is called a London dispersion force. Oftentimes, this is referred to as a van der Waals force as well. This is an induced dipole between two nonpolar molecules. So this is nonpolar and induced. Induced means it, it happens on its own, you or, you, or actually you make it happen. Or the act of these molecules coming together or atoms coming together makes this attraction happen. So let's first talk about what induced dipole means. Now bear with me. These are two-dimensional pictures here. But say I have N2. That's just two nitrogen atoms. Say they're approaching each other right now. In my nucleus here, I have positive protons. Outside, I have negative electrons. As this molecule approaches this one, <clears throat> the electrons of this molecule are attracted to my positive uh, nucleus here, the protons in my nucleus. They're all attracted. But as these electrons get closer to this molecule, or this atom here, these electrons also repel the electrons of this atom. So the electrons on this atom start to move away. The electron cloud literally starts to move away on this side, making this side of the atom partially negative, leaving the protons closer to this side of the atom, leaving this side partially positive. This atom, the electrons are drawn towards this proton, these protons, so the electrons are closer to this side of the atom, making this partially negative, and this side partially positive because the protons are left closer to the right side. That's called an induced dipole. It happens due to just the nature of attraction of the electrons to the protons, just through movement that happens. It doesn't happen because of polarity, because these are nonpolar molecules, and there are no electronegative um, differences here. So this is just an induced dipole. This comes into play as an intermolecular force when you have two induced dipoles interacting together. So the examples here in this one thing, sorry, these are temporary. Dipoles. They come, they go. They are not permanent because there are no, it's not a polar molecule. Now here, <clears throat> have the same exact thing here, except I drew it as far as its letters here, its connectivity, its Lewis structure. I have an induced dipole here. It becomes partially positive. This is you know, partially Negative. I'll do the same one I did over there just to make it. So partially positive, partially negative. This is just a snapshot of what happened here. And because of this, I have an interaction here. This interaction is my London dispersion force, the intermolecular forces there that attract these two together. This is temporary. It's instantaneous. It comes, it goes. It comes, it goes. As molecules move, their electrons shift. As their electrons shift, you get these temporary dipoles. They come, they connect, they go. These are the most common they're found everywhere because molecules are always moving. And many molecules are nonpolar. Hope you got this, gentlemen. Take notes. Get it.